Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. I'm aboard Mystic Eagle. And this morning I was reviewing some information I think that's really uh, very important. You know, for a long time people have been talking about the risk of Alzheimer's disease possibly being uh, increased in people who have had uh, exposure to toxic metals, things like uh, mercury and, and lead and cadmium and aluminum. And to answer this question, Chinese researchers working in collaboration uh, with researchers at the University of uh, Tennessee Health Sciences recently published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease an interesting report that is entitled Circulatory Levels of Toxic Metals, Aluminum, Cadmium, Mercury, and Lead in Patients with Alzheimer's Disease, a Quantitative Meta-Analysis and system, uh, Systematic Review. What does that mean, a meta-analysis? It means basically they are creating a report uh, based upon the review of previous other high-quality studies. And what they looked at was the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in correlation or not with uh, circulating levels of the metals that I've just talked about. Now, what did the researchers find? And I'm going to read to you their conclusion. Compared to controls, circulatory levels of aluminum, mercury, or cadmium are significantly higher, but the levels of lead are reduced in Alzheimer's disease patients. These findings suggest that elevated aluminum, mercury, and cadmium in the circulation, especially in the serum, may play a role in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Now, it's unclear to me why there was a negative correlation with lead. It certainly doesn't give lead uh, the go-ahead in terms of not being worrisome uh, in terms of brain health. But let's focus for a moment on what they did find that was positive uh, correlation, and that is aluminum uh, and cadmium and mercury. Aluminum, as you may know, uh, is something that we can be exposed to by taking aluminum-containing antacids, using aluminum cookware, aluminum foil, and even aluminum-based uh, antiperspirants. Uh, cadmium is something that we're not really going to be exposed to very much. Uh, it is used in electroplating uh, and smelting, also in the manufacturing of batteries. Uh, there is cadmium, however, in certain colors of paints uh, that artists may use. And finally, of course, mercury is something that we can be exposed to. Uh, by consuming it uh, in uh, various seafoods uh, and even freshwater foods that are high in mercury. The point here is that a well-constructed study uh, in terms of a meta-analysis does in fact confirm what our suspicions have been for quite some time, and that is uh, exposure and retention of at least aluminum, mercury, and cadmium seem to be fairly strongly correlated with risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. So that said, uh, it does tend to focus on the notion of prevention, uh, certainly as it relates to aluminum. Again, not many of you are going to be exposed to cadmium unless you happen to be artists working with cadmium-based uh, colors. Uh, but uh, certainly a mercury, uh, based upon the foods that you consume, specifically mercury, rich fish. Certain fish, as we know, are very high in mercury. Uh, fish like swordfish, very, uh, various larger tuna, for example, seem to retain a lot of mercury. So limiting our consumption uh, would be worthwhile. We do also know that, at least as it does relate to mercury, uh, that various interventions are effective. Various forms of chelation therapy are effective in lowering the body burden of that uh, uh, metal that we now see is correlated with Alzheimer's risk. So really everything we can do to offset the risk, taking straws off the camel's back, in this case looking at various toxic metals, I think is very important. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.